Okay. Who wants to watch me debate the motherfucking possible future governor of California? And welcome to The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson, and welcome back to Congresswoman Karen Bass. Uh, okay, she we're is skipping this part, obviously. Oh, here it is. All right, there it is. Congresswoman Karen Bass, thank you so much. Nice You're very to see welcome. you. Good to see you. Again. Up next, our panel is going to weigh in on all the issues we just talked about. Larry Elder, Hassan Piker. Look at them dancing. At least Larry's feeling it. <laughs> Karen Bass, thank you so much. Back with more of the issues right after this. <laughs> this was in 2019. Marvin Day, Tammy Terrell as well, right? Yeah, exactly. Fun. From Southern California to the Bay Area, you're watching The Issue Is. Senator Elizabeth Warren is moving on up when it comes to California politics. She's now in second place in Berkeley's new poll of California primary voters. Joe Biden is in first at 22 percent. Warren at 18 percent. Sanders, Bernie Sanders, now at 17 percent. Note that Kamala Harris has slipped to fourth place. She's at 13%, even though she's the senator from this state. Welcome back. Two very intelligent fellows with two wildly differing worldviews make up this week's panel. Larry Elder is a one-man hat trick. He's a syndicated radio host, including on AM 870 The Answer, an attorney, an author. His newest book out in paperback now is called A Lot Like Me, A Father and Son's Journey to Reconciliation. We're going to have more on that a little bit later in the show. Fun fact, way back in 1996, Larry and fellow conservative Dennis Prager appeared in a short film directed by, of all people, South Park creator Trey Parker, called For Goodness Sake, which humorously addressed race in America. Look at Oh my god, I did not I did not know this. I did I never react to this on stream? What the fuck? Trey Park. Oh god, he's such a fucking annoying libertarian, dude. I skipped this part, look at huh? Those outfits. Look All at right. That, look at that tie and that mustache. Yeah, my baby. Goodness. Hassan Piker is the. <laughs> I, mean, young, I was literally there, and I don't remember it. Youngest <laughs> of the Young Turks on the Young Turks Network. Piker's online commentaries have been seen and shared by millions, making him one of the most followed progressives in all. Wait. Oh my God. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. What the fuck, dude? It's top of the hour. It's top of the hour and it's time for a 60 second ad break, dude. I forgot. That's right. At the top of the hour, there's a 60 second ad break and I forgot to run it. Okay. But don't worry. If you want an ad free broadcasting experience, you can avoid those ads by subscribing for $5 or wherever you live in the world where it's cheaper. Or for free, if you don't have the $5, you can subscribe for free with a Twitch Prime, right? Or you can use an ad block or a VPN if you want that fucking nonstop ad-free shit, you know? Straight to the main line. But Twitch Prime is free if you connect your Amazon Prime to your Twitch account. Just steal someone's Amazon Prime and connect it to your Twitch. Here's the ad now. All of social media. Recently, on the podcast Chapo Trap House, Hassan talked about his experiences on the live streaming website Twitch. He's widely followed there as well. Welcome to you both. Good to have you on The Issue Is. Thank you for having us. All right, let's start with the big news of the week, which is President Trump's comments about foreign interference. Mm -hmm. This is what he said. Do you want that kind of interference in our elections? It's not an interference. They have information. I think I'd take it. Do you, what do you think? I mean, did, was this wrong, what the president said? Uh, it's not the answer I would have given, and there hasn't been a single Republican that has, that has backed that answer. Uh, and I was watching Fox and Friends this morning. He's already walked it back, and he said, no, I, 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 I would go to the FBI. Uh, it was an ill-advised thing, thing to have said. The bottom line, though, is there's been a two-year study to find out whether or not he committed any kind of collusion, and, and he didn't. But isn't he basically advertising, even if I didn't collude before, I'm open to collusion now? I don't think he is. It was an imprecise answer uh, to an imprecise question. I'm sure he's thought about it again, and um, he'd give a different answer now. What was imprecise about it, his son? I can't wait 
uh, two years later down the line uh, in the aftermath of the election when we find out that like there was foreign interference or something like that uh, Republicans will turn around and point to this uh, moment in time and go well they, he was just joking which is what they did with the previous uh, instances of well, Trump's joking. misspeaking uh, look I'm not a big uh, Russia gate hysteric uh, but it is without a doubt that Donald Trump is a corrupt person he is morally reprehensible uh, he, he demonstrates his corruption in, in wildly transparent ways and the American people seem to just laugh it up and, and take it in so I don't know it doesn't matter he can say whatever he wants he literally said that he could kill someone on Fifth Avenue shoot them and the American people would still vote for him and he was right he was joking um, and look this is an imprecise speaker he really is I love that he literally did what I said he would Republicans would do immediately after I was done I was like, no matter what he says, people will always say he's joking and it doesn't matter. Like, and he's like, he was joking. Obama was a very precise speaker. Uh, his three major decisions, in my opinion, were all based upon falsehoods. The Obamacare decision, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. My mother, as she, as she lay dying on her, on her hospital bed in Hawaii, was suffering uh, from having to fight with her insurance carriers. Turned out it wasn't true. Uh, the Iran deal was based upon a big lie that there was a fight between uh, moderate ayatollahs and hardliner ayatollahs and the architect of that deal, uh, Ben Rhodes, literally bragged in the New York Times that I lied about this. And the other one was when he pulled the troops out of Iraq and then later on blamed it on George W. Bush. Not true. He pulled them out because he wanted to against the advice of his entire national security team. Now, why aren't people talking about those kinds of things? Well, because he's not, he's not, the, he's not the president he's not the because pre Donald Trump is currently the president. And the fact that you have to reach so far behind and, and talk about the lies that uh, President Barack Obama told in the White House to justify the lies that Donald Trump is telling currently is kind of shocking to me. Well, I mean, Hassan, I, I'll, when I'll Barack explain, Obama I'll, fails... I'm happy to explain why I refer, Barack, refer, wait, I refer can to I finish? Obama. Can I finish? When Barack Obama fails uh, on the policy front when it comes to the ACA, which did not go far enough, I agree with you. Uh, didn't go far I, enough? I, I absolutely criticize Barack Obama for that. I think we do need socialized medicine, Medicare for all. Perhaps wow. could have uh, been more helpful for that, your for your mother, I'm, and I'm sorry for your loss. That's but. a whole other debate. But let's go. Oh, that, I I misunderstood what he was saying. I thought his mother died, which makes it more brutal. But it wasn't even his mother. It was uh, Barack Obama's mother. I think that's what he was saying, right? <laughs> the, the point that Hassan brought up, he, he said that the president... <laughs> the point that Hassan brought up, would your mother have survived if there was Medicare for all? <laughs> Drag the man's mother? I'm sorry, he fucking brought it in. ...that is morally corrupt. Right. How do you and, respond and, to that? And, and, and then I have to go back to Barack Obama to, to justify what Donald Trump says. He says it's shocking. What I find shocking is the pass that, that uh, people like uh, my friend gives people like, like Obama. Uh, the reason I bring up these inconsistencies, the reason I bring up Hillary, for example, in the basement server, she got a pass for that, is to show the double standard, the selective <laughs> outrage, and the hypocrisy on the part of people that are really angry about Donald Trump that gave Obama a pass for eight years, fast and furious. He got a pass. He got a pass for the Bergdahl deal. Got a pass. You got to pass on the on, on Obamacare. You respect the Elder? Fuck no. What are you crazy? I just told him that his mother uh, perhaps would have gotten better medical care if there was socialized medicine when I thought his mother had died. Do you think I fucking respect him? Are you out of your mind? Got to pass for all the misstatements, all the lies he made. But Donald Trump is a big liar. He's evil. It's double standard. It's hypocrisy. Wait, why do you always point to the double standard when I already admitted that when Barack Obama does something wrong, I openly talk about it? Can you just elaborate on your personal opinion sure, in this instance? Sure, sure. Rather uh, than trying to I, I'm, I'm uh, engage in whataboutisms and pointing out double standards? Because don't you think that that's a little disingenuous to I, go back to double standards when we're talking about Donald Trump, who's the president right now? And you have to draw from so far back, like Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. These people are not in positions of power. We're not drawing back to the... It's not okay. Two wrongs we're, don't make a right, we're right? Not, we're not drawing back to the 17th century. We're drawing back to just a few years ago. Okay. And... <laughs> Dude, I can't believe this guy's gonna be the governor, dude. He's getting fucking obliterated by this idiot. Who the fuck would wear pants like this, dude? On on television. Can you imagine?
you're sitting there and some fucking dickhead is just literally reading you the riot act in perhaps the worst pants that have ever been worn in the history of television. Like this fucking dumbass is literally in pajama pants, dude. And, and, and I'll just and give you, I'll give you one example. You, fast, fast, opinion, fast and furious. But, but, but to his, to his, his, let me, let me just finish. Fa fast, fast, fast and furious. Congress wanted uh, Eric Holder to testify. He didn't show up. They found him in criminal contempt of Congress. 17 Democrats even voted in favor of criminal contempt for him. And no one's talking about that. But when, oh, wait, so, but, so but you're when, saying but, the Democrats but, but, were but holding him accountable But when Donald Trump says... <laughs> it's not fast, morally fast, reprehensible. Fast, fast and furious. Congress wanted uh, Eric Holder to testify. He didn't show up. They found him in criminal contempt of Congress. Seventeen Democrats even voted in favor of criminal contempt for him. And no one's talking about that. But when, oh wait, so, but, so but you're when, saying but, the Democrats but, but, were when, holding but, him accountable? But, but, then. When, but when Donald Trump uh, says I, I, that I that I exert executive privilege, oh my God, he's stonewalling. So, All the stuff that Obama right. did, he went after but, reporters. But, but, but you just admitted that they, to, you just admitted that the Democrats were holding Eric Holder. Seventeen did. That's all. Okay. What, about, many, about, the, what about the rest are, of them? How many are holding Trump accountable? <laughs> To for wrap, all to, of to the wrap, awful to, things that he's done. To wrap this up real point. All the awful to, to, things he's done. To wrap this yes. up real point, quickly, though, but he, 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 he kind of was rocking and if rolling. It, if, it was, if it was wrong when Obama... Oh, man. Man, that's fucked up, dude. Imagine being in that position. Holy shit, dude. That's... Dude, that guy's a fucking... Like, that's a, that's a lawyer, too. Obama did. Is it wrong when Trump does it now? I mean, are they both wrong? I'm talking about the fact that... Why can't you say yes? That's really interesting, because I can say yes. Because Obama did awful things, but so is Trump, and Trump is doing even worse things. Why can't you admit that? Why can't conservatives was, ever was, admit when was, Trump is doing something wrong? There was a, a two-year and two-month investigation, $25 million spent to find collusion, uh, conspiracy, uh, coordination. They didn't find anything. Once again... And, and he punted on obstruction of justice. And once again, talking you're, about you're talking to a straw man, because I already told you that that's not my personal <laughs> perspective at all. If you want to have a conversation with a lot of open-minded leftists like myself, we are out there. We're on the Internet. We talk about our personal perspective. If you were open-minded, you wouldn't be saying, oh, I don't want to hear about what about ism. I don't want to hear about what Obama did. I don't want to hear about what Hillary because, did. Wait, why would I not want to hear about what about ism? That's like the definition. Definitionally, what about ism is a misdirection from the main argument that we're trying to have. He's upset that I'm literally trying to keep him on track with and and force him to answer something that Michael or, or uh, that that uh, Alex here asked him personally. I don't know why I said Michael. And he's just like, uh, oh, if you were open minded, you would let me deflect. Uh, if you were open minded, you would let me deflect away from this conversation to something entirely separate. Because yeah, two of wrongs don't make right. Of course you don't, because you look like you're a phony and hypocrite. And, 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 I criticize okay. Barack Obama throughout gonna, his entire gonna, presidency, gonna, and I criticize Hillary Clinton as well. I am not a hypocrite. We're gonna, you we're, we're gonna, are afraid. We're going to talk about another issue Medicare now. Medicare for all? Which are you is, kidding me? Which is the death <laughs> you're, you're a libertarian? <laughs> which is, which you is want government the, to control medicine? Let's talk Hell about yeah. another issue, which is... That's insane. Oh, I got to do these more, man. Oh, no. <laughs> I said, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Gavin Newsom, hire me, motherfucker. I mean, don't actually, but you know, what the fuck are you doing? Dumbass Gavin Newsom. He's out there looking sexy, sweeping sidewalks. You know what I mean? He thinks like that's going to get him to stop the fucking recall. Which is the issue of the, uh, the Democratic uh, primary now. Uh, this week we found out who are the 20 candidates that are going to be making it up onto the debate stage. This is a list of all 20 of them. Um, by the Do you guys remember when I said something in this debate that, was, uh, that really upset people? You'll see in a second. Way, all of them that have come on the issue is are on the debate stage. So just mm -hmm. candidates, good idea to come on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, sadly, for the candidates that are goose eggs, Steve Bullock, Mike Gravel, Wayne Nessum, and Seth Moulton, uh, none of them met the criteria. Um, I know many of they, our viewers are crying over they, that. They will be missed. Uh, so, <laughs> Mike I mean, Gravel is an entertaining where, guy. Where do you, I mean, where do you guys see the, the state of the race? Because I think you both might agree on something. Neither of you like Joe Biden. <laughs> well, I'm not a fan of any of them. Yeah. Um, uh, Me either, I, except, I, for, except for Bernie. Maybe Do you like Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren? Warren? Maybe. I, I, I'll, I'll vote for Elizabeth Warren, but it's definitely the second best So option. if Joe Biden got the, got the nomination and is running in, against <laughs> President Trump, you would not vote for him? This, I, is before, this is before all the controversy, by the way. So, like, 
this is before that shit popped off with Elizabeth Warren, like when she was an advocate for Medicare for all and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, I had no way of knowing that she was going to come across like if she was going to come out and like tank any sort of like viable leftist coalition or leftist momentum. So months before Super Tuesday, months before the sexism stuff, like, I don't know. I, I've, I've honest, no big donors at that point. You know what I mean? So considered uh, moving up into the mountains and living an anarcho primitivist lifestyle of Joe Biden uh, becomes the Democratic nominee. I think ah, okay. <laughs> Wait, we got to run it back. The, got the nomination and is running in, against President Trump. You would not vote for him? For I don't know. I, I've, I've honestly considered uh, moving up into the mountains and living an anarcho primitivist lifestyle of Joe Biden uh, becomes the Democratic nominee. I think Trump has a chance of defeating Joe Biden. But worse than that, even if Joe Biden wins, I think we go back to business as usual politics here in America. And, and next time around, it's not going to be Donald Trump. It's actually going to be an ideologically minded fascist, not a proto fascist who kind of uh, succeeded uh, somehow and, and, and fooled Americans uh, for long enough to get into a position of power, but an actual terrifying oh, leader. Oh, my goodness. There um, so once again, I'm obviously joking. Like I've I've thought about living a Ted Kaczynski lifestyle. That was the joke, and yet people took that. There were liberals at the time that were so fucking mad. They were like, "I can't believe you said that!" Blah, blah, blah. Like they were fucking losing their minds. They're like, "How dare you?" Um. Yeah, like I'm making a fucking Unabomber joke, and motherfuckers were like, "That's serious." Um, but not only that, but also my analysis is pretty fucking spot on. I think we went back to business as usual politics with a notable exception with Afghanistan, significantly better than my expectations for Joe Biden. And I fucking defend it. Okay. I defend Joe Biden. I'm riding with Biden now. Um, didn't you admit that you lied about not voting for Biden to scare the libs into nominating Bernie? Yeah, until like the last fucking feasible moment of Bernie Sanders' candidacy, I uh, would refuse to admit whether I would vote for Biden or not. But then after when it was Biden that was the fucking candidate, I was like, listen, it's not my candidate, but I'm, I'm still going to vote for him. Yeah, like suddenly the left is going to be the auth righty because of elders, libs, need to calm down. What? The Industrial Revolution and its consequences have been a disaster for society. Yeah. There was just a poll in Gallup, and they looked at Donald Trump ideologically. 17% believed that he was too conservative. 18% thought George W. Bush was too conservative. 38% think that Donald Trump's views are just right. 36% thought George W.'s views were just right. 39% thought both of them were too conservative. So the people perceive Donald Trump and George W. Bush to be almost mirror images ideologically. But I hear all this stuff about Donald Trump has changed the Republican Party, turned it into a party of cult. It's not true. People perceive them to be ideologically identical. I agree with you on that. I 100% agree with you. I think Donald, and we talked about this outside. Donald Trump is a perfectly sound Republican, but also George W. Bush was a war criminal. So I, oh, I don't crying, like George oh, W. Crying, Bush either. All right, right we're, we're, let, let's, let's take a war break. Criminal. Let's yes. take a break. Let's let everybody cool down a little people, bit. Remember? Up next. Uh, we're wait, 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 wait. About this outside. Donald Trump is a perfectly sound Republican. But also George W. Bush was a war criminal. So I, oh, I don't crying, like George oh, W. Crying, Bush either. For crying, All right, we're, we're, let, <laughs> for crying out loud. Let's let's take a break. Criminal. Let's yes. take a break. Let's let everybody cool he down a little people, bit. Remember? Up next. <laughs> that little thing, he tortured people, remember? For crying out loud. Uh, we're going to talk about another bad. issue that brings people together. <laughs> the bad. issue of homelessness here in California. A lot to talk about on that. Larry Elder Hassan Pike. They played my friend's song for this. It was awesome. Here, when we come back. This is one of my best friends. Really? The person who's singing the song. Who is this? Bryce Vine. What's yeah. he like? He's awesome. You want to have him on the show? I'll ask him. Yeah? Let's do it. Yeah. You're not even dancing to his song. 
<laughs> Wait, that's crazy. Did you pick this for me? Yeah. Is this my song? Oh my god, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Did you know that at all or no? Why did they keep the hot mic, by the way? That's kind of fucked up. It isn't quite the California dream for far too many homeless people. The official count shows homelessness way up in many California counties. The question now, what to do about it? Back with our panel, talk show host and author Larry Elder, Hassan Piker of the Young Turks. Larry, let's start with you. I asked this question to Congresswoman Bass earlier. Is this a failure of liberal policies yes. in California? Yes, because part of the reason for the homelessness crisis is because of the lack of affordability. Uh, Leo Haney is an uh, economist from UCLA. He estimates that because of zoning ordinances, NIMBYism, all the rules and regulations. That's so weird. My man is a straight YIMBY, Larry Elder. What's up, neoliberals? That's your governor, dude. That's your next governor. I'm sure all the fucking psychos in my mansion is being like, bought a house and is a NIMBY now. Well, uh, I mean, uh, they're neoliberals. Of course, they love Larry Elder. But like uh, all the fucking... All the fucking weirdo yimbies that are, are supposedly leftists that are fucking screeching at me because I think that, like, ultimately this does not solve the problem, like, making more landlords. Anyway, let's keep going. Regulation that they put on people that want to build housing. Uh, housing costs almost 50% higher than it ought to cost. So that is a failure of liberal policies. Nimbies are not in my backyard, uh, people. It's a, it's a housing argument. Yimbies are yes in my backyard, and nimbies are not in my backyard. They're like fucking urbanists uh that believe that uh you know we should have more buildings and and densely populated areas to solve the ho uh, homelessness crisis they're correct to a certain degree yes there should be more uh available readily available uh uh you know uh, permanent housing opportunities for people so they don't get priced out of the housing market and become homeless so i do agree in building more housing 100 percent uh but Yimbies usually are just like advocates for deregulation and don't want to don't want to make any like new conditions on on diverse housing, for example, or they don't want to make sure that like the housing that is built is assessing the needs or addressing the needs of the uh, housing uh, demands or the addressing the needs of, of uh, people that need permanent shelter or people that need not to get uh, priced out of the housing market. But the other problem, of course, is that a lot of people who are homeless have mental problems. Uh, they have substance abuse problems. And throwing money at it is not going to help. Why doesn't Elix have you anymore? No, he's asked me a bunch of times. I, I just, I kind of, I kind of curved him. I just didn't want to do it. But the government needs to get out of the way and allow churches and nonprofits uh, to deal with this problem. Uh, because government can't do it. Okay. Um, I agree. I think this is a problem of liberal capitalism. 100%. And I, want, I also agree with everything that Larry just said. Uh, I think the solution is to decommoditize housing as best as possible through a series of different programs. Rent control was something that was uh, put forward. And unfortunately, private interests were so powerful that uh, BlackRock, for example, uh, spent, uh, I, I believe, upwards of 14 million or $75 million in just lobbying and marketing efforts to make sure that uh, rent control that did not happen in the state of California. They're not in California. They just own a bunch of houses. There are 100,000 empty homes in the San Francisco metro area alone. And there are, what, 59,000 homeless people? It doesn't seem like... It, it, I know what the solution to this problem is. I think we all know what the solution to the problem is. And yet... What we is can't it? grasp our mind. We can't figure. We can't just. We can't just if, say it. If, what's, if, the, if, what's the if, solution? If, if Hassan, giving you, giving homeless people houses. It sounds if, ridiculous, if, if, if but Hassan, there are empty houses and people dying in the streets. What's more important? Making sure that the property values are as high as possible, or making sure that our fellow Americans, young children who are uh, who are uh, going to college right now, trying to better themselves and and and. Uh, trying to uh, to build a better future for America, living in their cars, living on the streets. What's more important? Rent control and policies like that create a disincentive on the part of contractors to build housing. So if you really- Wait, isn't this the guy that bought the $3 million house? Fuck yeah, baby. And I still have those exact same, I still have those exact same points of view. That's so strange. It's almost like uh, what I did does not even remotely conflict with my values and that uh, you were just bitter because I bought a house that was not to your liking and that you have to fucking literally live in permanent rent. Sorry. Um, it's okay, though. At least your mom enjoys my pool. 
when I fuck her in it, okay? That's right. I'm your dad now, and you're fucking grounded. Hold this L, bitch. Well, no, that's precisely what I mean. If you, if you really understood the problem, you'd be, you'd be opposing rent control, not, not advocating. I don't think rent control is a perfect solution. I think rent control is, an, is a band-aid, but it's a solution in the right direction. No, it's not. Because I just, what did I say? I said decommoditizing just, housing is just, the main goal. Building public housing, building affordable housing in the short term with rent control, making it as unaffordable as possible on the landlords to own private properties so that housing which I would regard as an inelastic, uh, uh, I would regard as having inelastic demand, which is a necessity for people to survive, shelter, right, very important, uh, should be dealt with appropriately. But I also feel the same way about so, healthcare as so, well. So you so. want government to displace private contractors? Oh, absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I said, wow. Wow. Oh, I can't believe this guy's going to be the next governor. Holy shit. But I also feel the same way about so, health care as so, well. So you so. want government to displace private contractors? Oh, absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think private contractors demonstrably are failing right now. We are seeing this. We're talking about homelessness. Why do you think this problem exists in California? It's affordability. People can't buy houses. And you're right about the mental health issue as well. Again, another thing where our government is failing us. Larry, your, de your defense for private contractors. Well, if, if Hassan believes the problem with, uh, with homelessness is because we don't have more rent control, uh, I, I don't know what planet he's living on. Uh, New York has had rent control for a very long period of time. It destroyed their housing stock that they had before the Second World War. It's not just War. rent control, Larry. And, and don't the, focus the, and, on and, that. And the idea that I, as a contractor, should be barred from charging fair market value for my rent will create a disincentive for me to build more housing. And single room occupancy also has been pretty much uh, regulated out uh, here in California. We ought to re rethink that. So we ought to unleash the private sector, not constrain the private sector as Hassan wants to do. Here's what happens when you unleash the private sector. Sorry to cut you off. Airbnb, which is absolutely destroying the housing market as well. Because, hey, they're incentivized. That's what, that's what happens when you try to fix something with the profit motive. You have a bunch of homeless people, and then Larry sits here and says, why don't we just let the, the nonprofits take care of it? Well, the nonprofits are not going to take care of it. If, if we wanted to wait for people to be nice to one another, I don't think we would have gotten into this problem in the first place. Let's talk about another issue. Uh, the California passed. Wow, almost like uh, my points of view have not changed at all. That's so crazy. I should have just played the Sigma music the entire time throughout this. But no, dude. Hey, guys. Keep yelling at me about how fucking I've changed because I bought a house or some shit like that, right? Man, that's crazy. I can't believe he's going to be governor. <laughs> Did they give you a wheelbarrow to roll your massive nuts out of there? Passed a budget this week, over $200 billion. Perhaps the most controversial aspect of it was this health care for undocumented people under 26. They'll have access you, you to, mean, you mean to illegal, Medicaid. You mean illegal aliens. Or depending <laughs> on your perspective on what word you, you choose to Wait, use. Wait, let me ask you. So, you said illegal aliens. Mm -hmm. Do you not think that they're human? They're human beings, right? Uh, is there a term called undocumented in the U.S. title code? It doesn't matter. Are they human oh, beings or not? I'm asking matter. you a direct it, it, question. It doesn't matter. We're, well, we're, we're having, you want to have a conversation about well, the legality why, why or whatnot. Why ask some stupid we, question like that? No, they're gerbils. Of course they're human beings. Oh, okay. So, the, the so question, then that's the fine. The then we should give them health care. The there which, we go. The question is, what should so, we call them? So, in, in, in the <laughs> Larry! Oh, Larry! <laughs> answer is the precise name in the title code for people in the country illegally is illegal alien not undocumented it's not in there why are not you trying to back into why are you trying to back into the legal Asana, conversation when we're trying to have a conversation around morality obviously i understand uh, how the law works the law is also susceptible to changing now let's have a conversation about the morality of whether or not we should be giving these people health care well i think well, that well, let's, well, let's let's ask the question though in terms of because well, money is not you know infinite so sure. sort of the choice for California taxpayers, when we have so many other problems, including homelessness for so many California residents, is this a good use of California taxpayer money to give it 
uh, to pay for this. Yes, no, absolutely. Absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely. I think we should I think we should solve the homelessness problem as well as I demonstrated in, in a few different ways and, and how we can make it a little bit better yeah. uh, and, and, and mitigate that problem. But we should also absolutely help the people that are here already that are working in in, in all facets of industry that are contributing to uh, taxes. I mean, we, these are just human beings. Are, like, you can call simply, them undocumented or you can call them illegal. You can call building, them whatever you want. But these are human beings that are existing. A bigger, a bigger welcome mat for people to come here illegally. In California, already illegal aliens can drive cars legally. In California, an illegal alien... This guy's like, literally, like, his advocacy is like, we shouldn't let them drive cars. How are they going to get to the fucking avocado, uh, uh, you know, fields, motherfucker? Huh? What do you want? And can get in-state <laughs> tuition, which somebody in Wisconsin born here can't get. It's Wait, outrageous. Wait, do you hear so that, yourself, that, that, though? That, like, you want to bar, uh, you want to bar human beings from driving around? Well, let's let, here, just because they were born on another side of he, an imaginary border. That here's is the here's the here's to the me. governor's perspective on this because I asked him that same question and he <laughs> said, <laughs> "I'm sorry, dude. Oh, Jesus Christ." beings from driving around well let's let, here, just because they were born on another side of he, an imaginary border that here's is the here's the here's the me. governor's perspective on this because i asked him that same question and mm -hmm. he says look they're here anyways they're going to the emergency room anyways it's going to be more expensive to treat them in the emergency room so we're better off giving them health care so then they can get preventative care what do you say to that the answer is you are creating incentives on the part of people to come here illegally to come to california and Wait, take so advantage why not kill them and take advantage it's why just, not kill not, them why not, not enslave them and put them in camps then yeah this no guy, i'm serious guy, well that's guy a piece of cake no 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 you're, 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 this is a serious question because because i don't use the term people, if you want to bar human beings, are they human beings up. are they human beings no 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 that's if just you wanna, ridiculous you talk about straw man you just did on. that i'm I, that's a question that i'm directing it's to you ridiculous. i'm not making i'm not making a statement here's the difference here's people what I'm should come to the country how far should we go people should come to the country legally how far should we go for those who are here already though should we kill them? You said you're fine with not giving them cars. You're fine with barring them from driving. You're fine with, with barring them from access to, to health care. How far should we go? Should we put them in little camps? We should Maybe not, ship we them should away? not reward them for coming here illegally. Okay. I, agree, I agree with President Donald Trump. So we how are, far are, do you think we should go? May I answer the question? Yeah. We should get rid of the bad hombres. Those who have done real serious crimes, they should be gotten rid of. And there are hundreds of thousands of people already that have deportation orders, and we haven't rounded them up and gotten them out. They ought to be gotten out. Do you think of, everyone with uh, a deportation order is a bad hombre, or do you think people are just getting deported at a higher rate now because Donald Trump wants to make it seem like he's, he's doing he's, something? He's prioritized it, and if you walk down the street and you're an illegal alien, you cross the, the street illegally, you're not being deported. He's talking about bad hombres, and I like the way he's doing it. All right, we're gonna we're gonna have to leave it there. Uh, before we go to break, though, we got to give a shout out to the Toronto Raptors and their number one fan, Drake. And in NBA Finals, they'll be known for their injury. I love the I love the end sequence there. Shout out to the Toronto Raptors. Um. Dude, that was oof. I wouldn't be mad about watching another one of these roast sessions. I mean, I've done this with like, I, I, I've done this with Ann Coulter. I did it with like uh, Michael Knowles. So when motherfuckers say I don't actually, uh, you know, debate at all or whatever, they're wrong. Okay. They're just wrong. That's not true. I do debate. Just not your fucking favorite dumbass on the internet. Sorry. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to keep it. Uh, I'm going to keep it real. Okay. One. Debates are just for funsies, okay? You have the capability of changing people sometimes, but ultimately, you're not, like, uh, arriving at a profound truth through the Socratic method in the way that, like, debate lords try to uh, explain it. Two, your fucking favorite debate daddy is irrelevant, okay? I'm only going to do it if it's cool, if it's a cool opportunity. I have a big enough, like, you know, I'm reaching out to a big enough audience and uh, it's going to be a fun experience for me. So sorry if I refuse to debate whoever the fuck you like keep putting forward because like, you know, some random neck bearded essayist is like, you know, uh, crying about uh, whether or not I uh, peed when a fucking YouTube video was playing in the background. Like, I'm not going to debate them. That's not fun. That's not interesting. That's not, you know, it's not in my best interest. So no, I'm not going to do that. Okay. So I'm just letting you know. Okay?
And yeah, if there's any proof that the debates don't do shit as this, you shat on this man, and yet he's pretty damn close to becoming governor. Yup. This dude got thoroughly embarrassed by a fucking idiot who streams on Twitch. Okay, stay so beer. Thank you for the five gifted subs. And and look at him. He's killing it. Okay, he's fucking gonna be governor soon. So give me a goddamn break. And I'm definitely not going to debate random fucking chatters who come in here. Who would you want to debate if you had the choice to pick a person? Steven Crowder, Ben Shabibo. That's pretty much it. Joe Rogan. So... You're literally pushing for the downstream effects of his proposed actions when he said illegal aliens shouldn't get health care, but he doesn't want to acknowledge that he's advocating for killing them indirectly, yet this man is on the way to becoming a governor. Debates don't work. Exactly. So, you know tell you about this week. I'm sitting down for a special combo with Hassan Piker about growing up in Turkey, finding his progressive voice, and becoming the woke bay. We also have a special one-on-one -on -one with Larry Elder talking about his new book. His New Larry Elder scandal just dropped from 2011. California recall candidate Larry Elder disclosed sexual harassment allegations on a 2011 radio show, but implied one woman was too ugly for it to be true. My man, dude. He also wrote a he wrote a book called Stupid Black Man. I mean, he's he's crazy. He's like he's like the OG uh black conservative. 